All right, so so folks, check it out. As you know, I think that mindset matters no matter what you do. Nervous system engagement is so important. So for example, when I was in third grade, baseball little league, bottom of the sixth inning, uh, the inning before that, we were up four to two. The team came back and 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 they um, they beat us in the last inning, and I made the last out. So that always stuck with me. Conversely, in basketball, Pee Wee basketball in Bayonne, New Jersey, back in 1983, championship game, uh, we were down two points. Our best player fouled out, and the other team was in a one on one. And even if the kid missed the shot, there was no way we were going to be able to put it into overtime because we had to throw the ball. There was only one second left. The kid misses the one-on-one, but the other kid fouls me. So now it's a one-on-one. I have to hit two foul shots to go to overtime. But even if we go to overtime, our player that averaged 30, he wasn't going to be there. So anyway, while I'm crying, they used to call me Waterfalls. That was my nickname when I was little. Whenever I lost, I cried. I'm on the foul line. I hit both foul shots. I'll, I, I have the news article to prove it, just so everybody knows. With that, that year they instituted a new rule that if you called a timeout and didn't have a, a timeout, it's a technical foul. Well, the inbounds the ball, the other kid calls timeout. It's a technical foul. I get out of foul and we win the championship. That trajectory led me to play basketball versus not play baseball. Nervous system engagement. So I, I had a good high school career. I had the good fortune of being kind of connected to the basketball uh, regality here in New Jersey of Bob Hurley. Uh, Bob Hurley Sr., the coach of St. Anthony's brother, is married to my sister. I bring all this up because a couple weeks ago, I had the good fortune of being at a place right here locally. A lot of people that watch my stuff, you, you know, we're, we're tracking the journey of my, my two kids that play basketball. And um, I'm, in, I'm in Coach Shempy's, he calls it the Shempy Circle, his little office. And there was a gentleman by the name Mike Poro. And Mike, what was interesting, before he told me his name, he was a kid that I seen play basketball 10 and 15 years before that, both on an eighth grade AAU team. And then when he was a senior in high school, thousand point scorer, a very, very good player. Very, you know, it just the game came natural to him, but we're going to talk about all his hard work. Um, was somebody that I saw and he then was training my child, Robert, which was kind of cool. So I invited him on the show. And what's up, Mike? How you doing, brother? Yeah, thanks for having me. Bro. So, so this is Mike Poro, everybody. Um, you know, obviously you don't remember me the way I remembered you. You didn't even know me, <laughs> but you know, it was interesting. I seen you in eighth grade all-star game and I remember you were probably the shortest kid on the, on the court. No doubt. But you were no the doubt. best kid, right? It was so interesting. Can you talk a little bit about when your basketball journey started and, and how that's impacted? We'll, we'll get into where you're at today because of the gift of basketball, right? right? right. Uh -huh. But how did it all start? Like what is, what, how did basketball become something that, that was part of your fabric? Man, well, first of all, thanks for having me. I, yeah. I really do appreciate it. Um, man, this this story goes back to when I was probably, you know, first, second grade. Um, Mom and dad would always send me to summer camps. I was fortunate enough to uh, go to camps with Coach Pete Cook. Um, coach was a actually the girls basketball coach at Point Pleasant Borough High School. And, and folks, we're in New Jersey, just so everybody knows, we're, we're this is a, a local New Jersey conversation. Yeah, and and Coach had the you know <clears throat> the fortune to coach. Christy Pierce, who was now Christy Rampone, the girls' uh, soccer player in the Olympic team. Wow. So we knew from the get-go that, you know, she had gone through him. She was super successful. Um, so I trained with Coach, man, from first grade probably all the way to sixth grade. So, so Mike, let's. Uh, I want to go slow here for the audience because what's important is whenever people tune into our channel, they want to they want to know about sequence and structure. Right. So, like, I know I grew up in Bayonne. We used to play in the schoolyard. We didn't have training. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the kind of early training that you had and how that was probably able to elevate you even faster, bring you up the scale of acceleration because you had not only good teachers but the love of the sport? Yeah, I think no doubt. I think one of the things that, that Coach always made sure that we were doing was having fun. Yeah. Um, and on top of having fun, you competed. Yeah. And, and that was always something that the drive to always want to be better um, finding little things that I could do. I was always picking coach's brain growing up. Like, what else can I do? So you always had that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I think from an early age of my dad instilling in me that he never let me win. Did he play basketball? No. Okay. Dad was a big soccer player and That's a big golfer. Wow. Dad actually played golf in college at Elon. Um, Elon. Elon University. North Carolina. Yep. 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 Um, and growing up, he never let me win. Never let me win. And I'd always remember mom saying, give him a chance, Jerry, give him a chance. And, and he never did. And I think that drive to always want to be the best or to get better at something. Nervous uh, system engagement. That 100%. Oh, yep. no doubt. It was always like, all right, well, we're not training today. I lived right by the Point Pleasant Borough High School. The yep. rec center was right down the road. 
I'd go to the rec center. Mom, dad, I'll be home later. They shut the lights off at 10 o'clock. I'd be driven my best. Now, what home. age was this? All, all through high school, all through middle school, high school. You so that was it. your love. Oh, that was, that's and, what you, and you were playing golf during this time too, yeah, right? Like every, that, yeah. Was that like a side hustle? For so you at that point? it's funny you say it. So growing up as a kid, um, so into sixth grade, well, I'll, I'll, I'll backtrack this even a little and further. And you can go nice and slow because they're going to okay. want to hear everything Yeah, so once I got to sixth grade, um, we knew basketball was a, was a huge part of my life. Freeze. So folks, listen, that's, thank you for that. Um, because for me, you know, I grew up in a very dysfunctional, disorganized situation, but I did fall in love with basketball early. And as a result of it, I didn't really know that, that you knew, probably to like seventh or eighth grade. But knowing that and understanding that and understanding the commitment is so important. So now you're in sixth grade. This is part of what it is. Yeah. Hey, I got to go to school. And by the way, I got to play basketball. Yeah. Right? So, like, and, it's, and it's so funny you said, because going into sixth grade, we had some options. Um, I was fortunate that you know, I had the choice of going to St. Peter's in, in Point Pleasant Beach or going to the middle school in, the, in Point Pleasant Borough. And, and I said to my mom, I said, listen, I want to go where they play the most basketball. Yeah. I understand education is important, but this is my drive. This is my passion. It's what I want to do. So we went from fifth grade in public school, sixth, seventh, and eighth. I went to Catholic school okay. and, and went to St. Peter's. Um, in were, they good, Beach. were they a good grammar school team? Phenomenal Got grammar it. school team. Okay. Um, you know, Coach Jim Murray was the coach. Um, his son, you know, Ryan was, you know, who's, who has passed since then. But, Rest in peace. Um, he, he was there. Jason Crail. I mean, we could go through the list of players that have gone through this place. Um, and you got went from playing only 15 games in a public school. Now I'm playing 30 a year. Mm. 30 games a year. Explain the importance. It's an unbelievable amount of, of competitiveness. You're constantly practicing. You're working out all the time. It's not just kind of like a, a, a semi-intramural thing. This is a full commitment, 30-game schedule. And understanding the science of basketball. And by the way, folks, if anyone read the book Mal by Malcolm Gladwell, where he talked about the outlier, and he talks about the Russian national 13-year-old hockey team versus the kid, the, the last kid that made it versus the one that didn't make it. Mm -hmm. And because of the surroundings, you're 14, 15, 16, and you're playing up with kids that are making you better yeah. in a structural scientific manner, kind of what you went through. Yeah, no doubt. It's all the difference. 100%. And I think, and I think the idea from playing 30 games as a sixth grader, seventh grader, and eighth grader, I think that mentality that says, okay, you've played against bigger, stronger, faster at that level. Now you're going to get to see it on a whole other level. Yeah. And then once... Eighth and there was grade, no shock. At no, that point. it was like you're, you're mentally you're prepared. Yeah. Physically, I knew I wasn't there. I, I I was still the small kid. I was tiny, but I knew that mentally I was ready to take on that challenge. And when I got into ninth grade, it was like I'm going to the local high school. But go, let's go back to eighth grade though. Were you okay. one of the best kids in the city? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, in, that's in, when I saw you. Yeah, it. yeah. So in our at St. Peter's, we played in a Catholic school league. Um, it was super, super competitive. Uh, folks, I want to I want to be clear. We're talking high level basketball. Like we're talking eventually leads to go college basketball, and just me in the stands. I didn't know Michael, but recognizing his talent and noticing he was literally the smallest kid on the court, yeah. yet the fastest and the most impactful and the most effective. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know being so successful at eighth grade, I think having that you know good head on my shoulders, understand like this is just one step in the process of getting to where I ultimately wanted to go. Um, you know, so I was fortunate to play in the all-star games and play in the AAU teams and play in these big events. So throughout this whole journey, it prepared me to what I knew what my end goal was here. So Michael, important to understand. So when we look at people in business, right? Entrepreneurs, right. and there's a talent pool, people either excel or don't excel. Mm -hmm. People that are even more talented sometimes don't excel as you climb the wall of mastery. Can you talk a little bit about people that you thought would have, could have, and should have, and didn't do it? And what were some of the characteristics of those folks that you recognize that even today, hmm. where you are, you could, because history repeats itself, right? No doubt. Yeah. So, yeah. so if you could kind of dig into that as we pivot to high school, I think that'll be meaningful for the folks that are out there. Yeah. I mean, listen, that, that, that's a very good question because I think one of the things that you see a lot is, especially nowadays, people get distracted between drugs, alcohol, um, Social media nowadays is, is crazy. So I, I think growing up as a kid, I, I was always narrow-minded. I was focused. I was a one-way street. I, I knew I needed to do X, Y, and Z because I didn't have the physical gifts that other kids had. Some kids would, would be out partying and still get up <clears> the next day and do things. Yep. I knew for me, like, that was not my path. That yep. was not my journey. And I knew that the only way that I was going to be successful 
is by doing the same thing every day. Understanding that you're not going to see the results maybe the next day, yeah. but down the, around the road, when I look back and I say, this is what I did to get here compared to the guys that had the skills, that had the height, that had the, the, the muscles, yeah. all that stuff. I think the journey that I took, it may have been harder, but yeah. I got to reap the rewards a lot more. Intentionality, purpose, outcome driven. All right, yeah. brother, tell us about high school. So, you know, once I graduated eighth grade, it was like, all right, you know, a lot of the Catholic schools, even though it's against the rules, are saying, you want to come to us, play for us. And I, I made a commitment to all my buddies that, listen, we're going to reconvene. We're going to get together. together. Yeah, we're going to do things together for our town, for our for sure. our, our community. Um, so I went to high school, Pumpa Zambara. Um, as a freshman, I played on the JV team. Big, um, pretty big, pretty big. Yeah, so right from the get-go, I, I was excited that, you know, I was getting that opportunity. Did you get playing time as a JV? And, uh, JV, I started. Yeah. Um, wow. I saw, I sniffed varsity time. As blowouts. A blowouts. Incredible. Nah, I'm though. not going to say we were getting blown out or we're blowing someone else. I got in. And Mike, um, how tall are you? Right now, I'm 5'8 on uh, a good day. What about when you were freshman? Maybe 5'1. Five, 5'1. One. Five, one. Yeah. Started yeah. JV. Yeah. So it, listen. Five, <laughs> in a very competitive <laughs> basketball environment. Yeah, no doubt. I, I to mean, be clear. And then, you know, so my soft, my freshman year, I put the work in. I, I understood that, you know, I'm not going to get to the end of where I want to be, but I'm going to practice against these bigger, stronger kids. I'm, I'm going to be competitive, um, and I'm going to learn, and I'm going to just soak it all, and I'm going to be a sponge. And so you give me something. I love it. Um, I, I'm going to listen. I'm going to watch the film. I'm going to practice hard. So you did, did you do watch a lot of film? Yeah. Oh, listen, Co Coach Hines and I are, are still best friends to this day. He was my coach in high school. Um, when I eventually got married, he was one of the best men in my wow. wedding. Awesome. Um, we communicate to this day like like we're, we're best friends. And, I, and awesome. I look at coaches as a true mentor. Um, so after my freshman year, I was like, all right, maybe maybe as a sophomore, I'm going to get my opportunity. Maybe as a sophomore, I'm going to put my work in. I'm going to get ready. Um, and my sophomore year comes, and I'll never forget having this conversation, um, sitting at the dinner table, mom and dad, and uh, I'm back on JV. And, and the coach asked me after the first scrimmage, he says, Mike, um, you can play JV or you can sit the bench on varsity and, and wait for your turn. And I, I wasn't playing JV. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. I said to mom and dad, I said, I don't care if I sit the bench the whole time, but I'm going to play varsity eventually. It's going to happen. I'll practice hard every day. Um, but I'm going to play varsity. Wow. Um, so I knew right from the get-go, and I think when you date back to where you were to where you're trying to get to, like you think back to those hard times, like the grind in the summer when kids are out doing their things. Can I ask a fair question? Yeah, absolutely. Because you, and no names, but you were told that you were going to play to wait your turn. Was there a sense of somebody was owed something, even if somebody may have been better, or <clears throat> was it a legit call? You know, I think it, I think when you when you're able to step back now and look That's at it, saying. you know, I, I maybe something was owed, uh, okay. maybe. But I, I said I'm going to do everything in my power to show coach that listen, I deserve his minutes. You as a coach now, do you recognize that, and would you reward that into oh, a kid listen, that would do the same thing, did the same thing, even if you thought you were owed something? Listen, I'm going. I'm going to the kid that that deserves to play. I, I'm. I'm. I, there is no like I owe you. You owe me. To Understood. me, at the end of the day, like. You work hard. Yeah. You do what's asked. You're accountable for your for your 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 third one plan. Awesome. I, at the end of the day, you need to have someone that is out there you can trust. Yeah. And and I think that's ultimately um, one of the big things as a coach. No like doubt. Like I need to I need to trust you. No doubt. Um, and I get it, you're not always going to make the right decision. Yep. But I know at the end of the day that you're going to die on a sword for us. Yeah. Like you're yeah. you're going to do that. So. So now you go to practice every day. Now you're like, yes. you know what? I'm going to burn all the boats. I'm going to take over the island. Yeah. That's it. And my, and yeah. Taking over the island is getting playing time. It's so funny because during my sophomore year, we're eight games in. Yep. Haven't really played. Okay. Haven't really played. How are you doing to practice at this point? I'm, I, I'm at, to me, yeah. every day. I'm, I'm going no, to practice. But like again, like how are you? In my eyes, I'm, I'm beating the guy. In okay. Front of me. I, in my eyes, I'm competing and I'm, and I'm doing what coaches ask every day. I, and I get it like, I'll get my turn. So and you made it hard on the coach, though. No doubt. My, I felt like that was my job. My job is I want to. I don't want you to put me in. Yes. I want to earn it. Yes. Okay. And I want you. And I want to feel like that it's not mom and dad behind the scenes. Yes. Um, that it, exists. It's a hundred percent. It's it's the work that I'm putting in yeah. every day. Um. So eight games into the season, the ninth game comes. One of the kids in front of me gets hurt. Gets one hurt. of the guards that the you guards were... in front of me that gets yep. hurt tears his ACL. Don't Wait to find out. Got it. Mike. Yep. You're ready. And you were and ready. I was waiting. Yeah. Waiting. How tall are you at this point? 5'3". Wow. Still still not big. And sophomore year finishes. How did you do? 
So, uh, it's so funny. So after my sophomore year, I had a total of 200 varsity career points. Wow. That's it. That's not yeah. bad, though. Not considering, bad, not bad. You know what I mean? You lost the first eight games. You're not the primary shooter. Only I scored two as a freshman. I scored 198 as a sophomore. Wow. So uh, the thousand point thing, not really in my mind. So yeah. I'm not, to me, it's like now it's my chance. Yeah. Um, my junior year, I knew going into the year, like, okay, it's a, it's a coming out. And party. your name was circulating. circulating. Now it's coming out. Like, yeah. Like Poro, so-and-so, blah, blah, blah. And I knew going into my junior year was a big year. Yeah. It was a big year. It's like now I can finally showcase all this hard work that we're putting in, you know, in the dark. No yeah. one's watching me. Yeah. No one's seeing it. Like Love it. now the lights are on and now I can showcase. It's time to shine. Yeah. So I knew that my junior year was a, was a very big year for us. And, and we did. How was your team? Very good. Yeah. We went 18 and 6. Um, we actually lost in the state semifinals in the sections. Um, what was your big, big wins that year? Oh, man. Well, the biggest one. Probably beating Mondon at their place three times. Um, wow. that, that was a big thing. Back then, you know, it was now it's Donovan Catholic, but at the time it was Monsignor Donovan. Wow. Beating them three times at their place was not at their place in total. What um, was a huge, wow. huge accomplishment. You know, anytime a small public school can beat a parochial, um, always carries a lot of weight, especially yeah. in town. Yep. Especially in town. Um, so I knew that my junior year was, was, was a very good year. Um, and, and still, when you looked at the stats, um, Still very, very productive. How much? How many I, I think I averaged about 16 and a half. All right. um, and, and, and still, when you're thinking individual goals, um, I still only had, I'll never forget, I had 565 total points. I only scored 365 my junior year. Going into the senior. So I, I still was a well, you well shy. 20, yeah. Well, well shy. Um, but after my junior year, that's when I got selected to go play in, in Hawaii. Now, before we go any further, okay. let's let's freeze for a second. Were you playing golf at this point? Yeah. So so okay. so so, as a rule in my house, um, Dad was very very strict on grades. Grades. Do, was, do you have any siblings? I do. I have a younger sister and a younger brother. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, and it was always grades first. So you're gonna play three sports in my house, according to Dad, and you're gonna get A's and B's. Hmm. Now, if you don't play a sport, you're gonna get straight A's. I said, I, I don't know if I can get the straight A's thing, but I can play three sports. So I played soccer for four years. Did you really? Soccer, four years. And, and uh, for, for anyone out there, how, how did that been? Your conditioning must have been. Con conditioning was the, one of the most important things I, I can yeah. harp on. But I think the other side is just being a competitor. It may be a different arena because I was able to, I was able to see a different role. I wasn't the star. Got I it. came off the bench. I did whatever coach asked me in a different aspect. Were you practicing though, basketball at night? On the side, Got I it. did my I, basketball. Always there was always time cut out Got for it. basketball. Got it. Soccer practice in five o'clock. Come home, eat dinner. I'd go down to the rec. Right. So success leaves clues, folks. I mean, let's just soccer, homework, dinner, basketball. September, October, November. Mm -hmm. Right, hundred yeah, percent. Four years in a row. Still, even though he's playing soccer, he still was keeping his game you know, sharp, strong. Yeah. He wasn't losing anything, maybe not gaining, but maintaining, mm -hmm. and then would really do the sprints in the summer. Yeah, so. and yeah, so all, all throughout high school was soccer, basketball, and golf. That's what I did. Um, golf's a spring sport. And golf's a spring. And, and basketball, in a sense, never was forgotten about. Yeah. Whatever, even to this day. Even, yeah, even to this day. Whatever, whatever time I had to get to the rec before the rec center shut the lights off at 10 o'clock. Yeah, amazing. I was always that, I was always that kid down there. Pounding the ball. I'm sure Love the neighbors it. didn't always like that Mike was out there, but Mike was out there. That's okay. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and then so my junior year finishes. Um, and you get invited to this prestigious. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're one of the best players. Is that like in New Jersey in the air? Like what, so what? it was it, for the way I recall it being wording was just like a top 100. It was a big deal. Period. Yeah, it I, was. It was my nephew told me. I yeah, remember that. It, I was for my recollection. I was one of two kids in New Jersey that went out there. Yeah. Uh, and. You Man. went out to Hawaii for both sports. No, just basketball. For basketball. Sorry yeah. about that. So I went out. So I was selected as a top 100 basketball player to go out to this camp, per se, in, in Hawaii. And it was for 14 days. Never been to Hawaii in my life. Um, went out there. Yeah. And I, I'll never forget. I room with a kid from Brooklyn, New York. Did um, your parents go? Or you saw no. Them? No. I went out there. And um, first five days, it was all team building. You got, got to it. learn about the other kids that you're there with. You're you're doing all these amazing adventures from, you know, rock jumping, snorkeling, surfing. I kid you not. We did so many things. Um, and then the basketball came. Mm. And then for me, it was like, okay, I'm 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 still. I'm about five seven. Yeah. My junior year, I have a picture of me holding the rim 
Wow. No hair under my armpits. Wow. Still hadn't hit puberty. Yeah. I'm a, I'm finishing my junior year, so I'm still this little kid yeah. going out to Hawaii, and I get there, and all these everybody's looking at me. I got yeah. six five, six yeah. three, Dunk six four. And I'm this little white kid yeah, shooting laps. Yeah. Shooting laps. Um, but man, I that my goal that day that that week was I'm gonna change everybody's opinion. Um and I was still the same gym rat that I was at home. The yeah. gym was open, seven AM, Mike was in the gym. Bam. And and I'll never forget that the last day of camp ended and they gave out awards. I was fortunate enough to receive like a top twenty player at the camp award. Wow. How many um, people were there? Man, hundred. 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 Yeah. Yep. Um we had ten different teams of ten. I'll never forget it. Um and man, what it, so leaving there after my junior year, I was like, I was mentally, now physically, I, I was primed into my going into my senior year. Yeah. Like I, I knew what needed to be done. Outcome. Um, and, and I was Purpose. prepped with all the work that I'd put in, um, ready to get this thing going. Yeah. Um, senior year comes around, and man, um, we we did some unbelievable things. And I, I one of the things that stands out is um, my senior year. We're at Lakewood. Yep. Um, uh, who? J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith. Everybody. Yeah, NBA basketball player, and I and I still use this story to the day. Um, we hadn't beaten Lakewood in years. Yeah. Years. I don't even know the last time we actually beat them. Um, we're at their place, and I'm playing phenomenal basketball. Um, we end up winning on a buzzer beater. Wow. Win by two. The headline reads: Poro Powers Panthers mm. scored 30 points that night, and Oof. I swear. Um, did from the, that point the coaches on, knocking on the door. Yes, yeah, so it was. Yeah, so from that point on, it was like, okay, you know, he's not this little kid who physically may not look the part. There's something going. Something on going on. Yeah, you know, he's he's got it. Amazing. Um, he's got it that he worked real hard for. for yeah, Ten years. Yeah, and, and yeah. I think that's where you try to explain to you know players nowadays is like y you work when the lights are off, so that the, when the lights are on, yeah. you showcase. There's that. an overnight success, twenty years in the making. Success leaves clues, powers, rituals, nervous system engagement intentionality it's not just shooting jumpers it's shooting jumpers at game speed shooting foul shots when you're tired running jogging competing all these different things writing out goals figuring out what you want to be and most importantly understanding that if you have a purpose with an outcome and if your why makes you cry then you're going to put yourself in a position to succeed Tell yeah us about the rest so of your and year. then you know obviously my senior year goes you know unbelievably i think i finished with just under 600 points alone my senior yep. year um you know did at, you did you guys make the tournament yeah so guys... so i at we make the sectional finals at Washington Township. No, what about um, the county? Um, so we ended up losing to a loaded Neptune team at the time. I had four Division One basketball players: uh, Terrence Todd, yep. Taekwon Dean, who yep. went to Louisville. I remember. Um, I remember Rob, that team. Rob, Robert Alston. I mean, was these, it a close game? No, okay. no, no. They blew us out. Yeah. I'll they, never forget. Oh, it's so funny you say they lost to St. Anthony's that year. Yes, to CSC. Yes, I remember exactly. that. Loaded squad. Yeah, loaded squad. We lost to them actually in in. Um, I want to say it was like the the quarterfinals. We lost to them. Um, but I'll never forget that that day, opening tip, they win it, back tap it, lob, dunk, start the game two. Yeah. And we're just like, wow, we're in a different world. Was that the first time you played them? First time we ever Got played it. them, yeah. Um, and that was for us like a big deal because a small school like us never was had the opportunity to play a new yeah. team. Yep. You know, we couldn't get them on a schedule. They went, you know, it was a yeah. lose lose for them. Yeah. So we, you know, we learned again from that, like, let's build off this. This is what it's like. Um, so we get to the, the state tournament and, and we're in the finals. Um, I'll never forget. Who Swarm. did you beat going in? Any, any was Cinnam any... we beat Cinnamonson going in um, at third place, and then we're in the finals. I scored two points right off the bat, become the all-time leading scorer at the high school for the wow. all-time leading scorer for the boys. Um, right off the bat, knock a layup down. We don't even stop the game because at this point we're we're yeah. not worried about that. Yeah. Um, down three with about 15 seconds to go. Mm. So some of the things he's, you know, and this is a bad memory, but this is one of the things so you, never you, you just don't forget. Yeah. Down three, coach draws up a play. I said, listen, it doesn't matter what play you drop. I, this is going in. Yeah. Like, I know this is going in. This yeah. is the moment that you've trained your whole life yeah. for. You're down three. We drop a play, come off the screen, knock it down, and tie the game. Mm. Make a long story short, there's 11 seconds to go. They inbound the ball. They come down. Kid shoots a floater from the baseline. The bounce, bounce. Oh, boy. Horn goes off. Ball goes through the rim. Yeah. We yeah. lose on a buzzer beater. Um, Sorry to hear that, bro. Yeah, listen, <laughs> even to this day, even to this day, I talk to Coach Hines all the time, and I had, I said, you ever watch that film? Yeah. He said, "Not, never Can't. watch it. Can't yeah. watch it. Can't now, watch it. Now, did they win after that? So Did they win in the COC? No. no okay. No. Right. So, which made it even worse yeah. that they did not even make it there, that I kept saying, like, that was us. Yeah. But 
for what we had accomplished Tremendous. and what we had did. Yeah, um, man. Beyond what about that. what about you now? Did you get offers? So so it, yeah. Like, so leading like? leading into that, I, I knew that being at this point a five eight kid, you know, you're not going to get anything outrageous. Yeah. I, I try. We we were out there. We did things, but but. For me, I was I was also so into the golf side of things as well as playing golf and, and competing in that that I, I decided that I, I wanted to do both. I said I'm I'm gonna pick a place that's going to allow me to do both. Wow. Um and and, and most of the time people look back and say, Well, why why would you do that? You yeah. know, basketball was your ticket, you put so much time and effort into it. Um, but for me, I always had like a, a long term mindset of like, what's gonna help me down the road? Like what mm. what is something that I can do wow. that's gonna benefit me? Um so I, I said, not only did I want to do both, um, but I wanted a good education too. Yeah. And so it's you like, said all that at that age. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I, so I always felt like I had a good head on my shoulders, thanks no to doubt. mom and dad, about like, you know, maybe you're a little too mature for your age, and you know, kind of like I never really got in trouble. Yeah. Um, I kind of stayed the path. I knew what I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and, and I was fortunate enough that I got into TCNJ, the college in Jersey, the wow. old Trenton State, to do both. Yeah. Um. I knew I was going to get a good education. I was going to get into teaching, yep. coaching. Um, but man, when I got there, I said, I, I don't know if I can do both. And they were good too. Oh, very good. They I mean, really th good. Th this, I was walking into a place that, you know, coach had came to multiple basketball games. Yeah. You could tell that like, you know, not trying to be a bragger, but like he wanted me yeah. to come there. He, he's Mike, we're, we're going to make a valid effort to make you get in here yeah. to play. Um, and man, this is when this is when the lights really went on. I, I think, as an adult, I, I said this is a tough decision because after about one or two weeks there, I said, I'm not sure I can do the academics and the, 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 and the basketball yeah. and the golf. Yeah, absolutely. Because I always looked at it like you're either in with both feet, well, you're not. or you're not. Yeah, you, 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 you can't have. It's both. tough to do two sports in college, like no like doubt in high school. No doubt. So amazing. Yeah. So I, I unfortunately told coach, hey, listen. I know this is like blindsiding you, but um, I'm gonna do strictly golf. You knew what you wanted, though. That's what's like. I'm sitting here. I'm just thinking about your your journey, your story. Whether it was the rec center right after soccer practice, whether it was in sixth grade when you guys had a family dinner, it was a family decision. And you knew that basketball was part of that fabric. And then in college, you wanted to get a good education, but understood on some deep level that golf was better at business than basketball. That's mm -hmm. what I'm sensing. Mm -hmm. um, tremendous. I mean, not a lot of 18 year olds know that. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, and I, and. You know, I think a lot of that is, you know, I got to give credit to mom and dad for it's the upbringing, upbringing. I would um, love for my kids to think that way in two Yeah, years. I mean, and, and that's, that's, you know, I, I still look back to this day. You know, you always play the what ifs. Like, oh, man, sure. what if that, what if that? But, you know, I, I don't like to look in the rearview mirror. For me, it's like, let's look ahead. You know, decisions were made. Yeah. And, and I think when I look at it now, it's opened the doors for so many things. I was fortunate enough that when I was a junior in college, I got right into coaching as a, as a volunteer assistant at Point Pleasant Borough. Did you really? Yeah. So okay. I was commuting every day. So you were ready to coach. Then. Oh, I was all in. Okay. All in. So Fine. I knew I knew for me that like playing golf. Now, been... why did you want to coach though? If we could if we could talk about that. Well, what I, was the, oh man, what's the Jeez. what is your right now? You coach, right? Mm -hmm. What is what is the juice every day? I I know. Com listen, I get it. Competition, right? Love of the sport. But when I look at Coach Shempe, mm -hmm. right, here's what I love about Shempe. Now, listen, I saw Coach Early build a great culture, mm -hmm. created the most competitive environment you could think of, constantly won, had a standard, mm -hmm. right, played within the, the framework of the rules, did it from 1973 until the day they shut the doors. Culture, 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 right, Win, winning, winning, winning. Shempe, different kind of culture, different kind of, um, you know, means of, of folks with, with money. Mm -hmm. However, the whole town is, 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 you know, those play. He comes in, they haven't won a championship in 30 years. He comes in, changes everything because culture matters to him, yeah. right? Bob Hurley was also a great X and O coach, mm -hmm. right? So I look at Shempe. Shempe is all about from, you know, when they're in third grade to play at Victory Park. The whole family comes down. They all watch it. He doesn't want to lose any kids from that live in Rumson to RBC, CBA, or whatever other school when it comes to basketball. Right. That's his thing, Right. Probably didn't have the basketball background that you had, mm -hmm. you know. You know, a little bit different as far as a player, but the love of basketball. And I genuinely watch him, and I think he genuinely cares about the kids, yeah. Especially the kids that are average or below in the game itself. No doubt. For you, what is it? What is the burning desire? I think it's relationships. I think the idea that you're able to be a positive role model for these kids 
um, day in and day out, you know, that to me is what matters. I think the memories that you make um, on and off the court Amazing. go a long way. And I, and I think, you know, one of the things I always value all the time, even from when I coached at Wall to when I came down to Barnegat is – I stay in contact with these And you coach guys. now? Uh, where, where do you coach? Yeah, I coach now at Barnegat High School. Yeah, uh, high school head coach, right? Yeah, yeah. I started at Wall Township as the head coach there. I was there for six years. Yep. Um, moved down to Barnegat um, and now been a head coach there for eight years. Amazing. And I still, to this day, to the kids that I coached my very first year at Wall, we stay in touch. Amazing. It's, it's, not, it's not just a hi and goodbye. It's not like I see you during the winter. Like The relationships that I've formed with these kids, I think, are the ones that that that's what makes the impact and that's why capital. yeah oh listen to me that that's the most important thing they they don't remember the wins and the losses like we remember the the, the fun times we had off the court we remember we remember the laughs that we had in the locker room and every time it's their birthdays or my birthdays we're always catching up checking in with each other that, that to me is what matters and you know what we call that in our world is connective tissue mm -hmm. the memories that create connective tissue that that's what it's all about yeah so talk a little bit about, you know, you're married. When did you get married? Yeah. How many kids do you have? Yeah, so I, I've been married since 2009. Um, wow. Young. Yeah, yeah, so I got yeah. married when I was 25. I got two. High school sweetheart, No, I met her, met her my, when I was teaching my first year um, awesome. um, at, at Barnegat. It's funny because. Did she know when you met her that she was going to be your wife? No, but I. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew you did. And it's, you and know every, it's, like, it's, it's so, you have your next 10 years <laughs> mapped out. I'm not so, confused it's so about funny, that. It's so funny you say it because. She's a very, very smart woman. She teaches AP physics. What's her name? Uh, her name is Kelsey. Kelsey. And I, and I teach phys ed. Yep. And everybody says to me, man, you married someone. You know, she's so much smarter than you. I said, time out. <laughs> I'm smart for marrying someone smart. Yes. So I, I always kind of flip the script like a little bit here. I like that. Um, and, and say that. But, you know, I, I met her down there um, when we were first, when we were both teaching at Barnegat. Um, two years in at, at Barnegat, I was offered the head basketball job at Wall. Yep. Um, I went up there and I still teach there, but I, I coached basketball there for six years. Um, you know, I got two little kids now. How old? 10 and seven. Awesome. Um, which is Boy, why. Boy, girl, girl, Two girl. girls, two girls. And sports? Um, lacrosse and soccer. Okay. Um, so to me, it was, I was spending so much time up here in Wall that they were getting older. I wasn't around as much. Yeah. So when this job opened up at Barnegat, it was kind of like a catch 22. And, and I'll never forget it because the team that I was leaving um, was a team that we had built up from AU. Mm. Um, one of the toughest decisions I've ever had mm. as a coach. As in my personal life, super easy yeah. because family came first. Yep. But when you look back at it, I knew that this senior year that these kids were about to have was going to be one of the best ones ever. Yeah. And people would say to me, why are you leaving them? Why are you leaving them? Um, and I always thought that if you can leave something in a better spot yeah. than where it was when you came in, like you that. did your job. You yeah. did your job. And when I left there, those guys went on to win the division for the first time in, in 20 plus years. They had three 1,000 point scorers on one team. Wow. Um, That's... And, and they did some unbelievable things. And you knew that like you left that yeah. in a way better spot because when I took over, I was the fourth coach in four years Ooh, at this place. Yeah, so you, yeah, so when you talk about turnover, yeah. you built it to a spot now, and everybody said you didn't get to reap the benefits. But it's not about me. Yeah. It's about them. And and it's how you they, felt. Right. They yeah. knew that the work that we had done. That's amazing. My tremendous stuff. Go ahead. Keep going. I'm just yeah, it, I'm, it, I'm admiring yeah, what you've it's, done. It's, 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 it's kind of, you feel like Bob the Builder to yeah. some aspect. Because when I left Wall, you're leaving what is now like the top of the line, the glory. Here comes the glory of all the hard work that yeah. you're putting in. And you leave it. And it's funny because I leave it to go to this place in Barnegat that I had a great relationship with the athletic director. Awesome no, guy. Where's Bar is that on Long Beach Island? No, it's, it's right off. It's, okay. it's, like, it's, it's about exit 67. It's about 10 to 15 minutes north of LBI. It. Okay. Um, so it's about 10 or 15 minutes north of where I live. And and how's the talent pool down there? Is athletes, it something you could... Yep. Athletes. I, I always thought it like they had the athletes to be successful. But before I got there, the year I took over... The year before I took over, they went three and twenty-one and lost their first eighteen games. Oh. So everybody's saying you're leaving the top of the ladder to go here yeah. to start over. Like Mike, you got to be crazy, and 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 I and I always had that internal confidence that like, okay, we're gonna put the work in. We're gonna put our head down yep. and we're gonna do this job the yep. way we know we're capable of doing it, um, and we'll reap the results later yeah. on. Um, and and after our first two years there. Um, you know, we had some tough times. Yeah. We did. Listen, there was no doubt. You know, my first year, we only won 13 games. My second year, we only won eight games. 
Wow. So it was like, like, okay. But to me, it was like, again, you're thinking long-term here. Like yeah. you're not talking about instant microwavable results. Which like, is great, by the way. The know, fact so, that you had a long-term viewpoint. Yeah. Gives and, you a and different mindset. Listen, and I always thought that it may not happen tomorrow or the next day, but it will. And then after those first two years, the next five, we went 81 and 45. Wow. Um, this school we it produced. the teams you built up. Oh, the, oh you, yeah. Through your whole program. Through the whole program. Yeah. And we got, Barnegat finally got their first 1,000 point score. Wow. Um, we made, mo we, for us in South Jersey, it's a very difficult order because you're dealing with Camdens and the Haddonfields in That's your right. section. Got it. So wow. we lost in the sectional semifinals to Camden. Um, and for us, that was like a win. Yeah. We went we went there on a, twice, went down a Friday night, six o'clock game in Camden. Oh boy. Um, before they got <laughs> their old high school. Um, so we knew for us, it was just an experience. Oh God, let's, yes. let's just go do the best we can. And, and for us, um, we did. Um, we had a great time. We, and we've built it to a point now to where, like, it is not what it was. Yep. And every year that people come in, they know what they're getting. It's no easy out. It's no let's schedule these guys because it's a win. Yeah. We've got to a point where. So you're, you're this year, rebuilding year, but you started tell all the folks. Yeah, so this, 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 this year kind of dated me back to my second year there where we only got seven wins this year. Yeah. Um, and everybody's like, man, Mike, you must be losing it. You must be losing it. How, how you doing? You already see next two years. Right. Yeah. But we also started three freshmen yeah, and a that. sophomore. And how tall so, are they? Uh, three guards. Maybe one's 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and maybe the big guy's like 6'1". Got it. Okay, so when I think about it, I'm like, not not big guys, but I know when you think, let's look big picture. Yeah. We don't have the ability like other places to reload. Now, were you tenacious defense type? Is that, I, I sense that. Yeah, like, listen, I, like I got gonna, after. I, I think yeah. in everything I do, it's like. Even your teams, though, yeah, right? Yeah, we're, we're, we're blue Full collar. Court. Blue collar, get in your face. We're going to defend. Um, scrappy, tough. Yeah. Um, we play defense. Yeah. That's why I like. We're going we're gonna to play defense. Yeah. Um, and everybody's bought in. And, and, I, and I say, you know, I, I get it. Living in the present, it was not easy. Yeah. It was stressful. But I think when you can project out ahead. And how do you handle parents? Do you have preseason conversations? How do you handle um, the emotional side of kids maybe, you know, coming back not as good or maybe having mentally tough years? And how do you handle all that stuff as a coach? Yeah, I, th I, th I think one of the things, like anything, it's just having an, an open line of communication with the guys. Yeah. Like, listen, let, let's talk. Um, what, what do but you But you know, feel? not everyone's going to be happy. Listen, and, and I think at the end of the day, you're not always going to appease everybody, yeah. no matter what my decision is. It could be you're the ones you like or not like. Um, but for me, I think one of the things I value is I'm very good at communicating. Yeah. I, I don't care if you want to email me, you want to text me, you want to call me, like, let's talk. Yeah. And I, and I ultimately can say like, if you have a problem, he has a problem. We're going to sit down and talk. Yeah. The coaching staff, the parent, the player, let, let's see if we can come to some sort of understanding yep. with the understanding that we may not agree, yes. but, but as I've always said, I'm going to be honest. Let's have a conversation. Let, let's yeah. talk about it. That's awesome. man. And, and, and I think that's always one of the things that I've valued is, the ability to communicate with people. So here, um, here's here's what I love. You know, thank you for sharing your st unbelievable yeah. story. If I'm if I look the next five or ten years, right? What is what is important for you? If you could put your flag down, what do you want that to be? Oh man, it's I mean, a great, in terms it's a great of basketball, question. Yeah, it's a great question. You know, family. I listen. Yeah, I get family, mm -hmm. and that's the most important thing, mm -hmm. right? And and creating a legacy. But in the sport that you're in right now, as far as coaching, what does it look like for you for the next five years? Man, I, I, I think. Five or 10 years. Yeah, I, I would like to think that, you know, let's cross my fingers that Camden gets out of the section, first off. But uh, <laughs> I think I think not not for anything. I, I'm not so much a results-driven guy. Yep. To me, it's like let's – it's all about the process of, of getting better every day. And I think if I'm able to have the same type of impact on the players I've had – in the past, if yep. I can continue to have those relationships with the kids moving forward, to me, that's a success. And when those guys reach back out to me, it's like, all right. And, and what do you have to do to maintain that? What is your daily um, well, rituals? Yeah, so to me, and it's something you could expand. Yeah, off of. so to me, it's it's always we we connect once a month. Yep. I'm I'm always reaching out once a there month to is. these guys to see how they're doing. It's yep. it's not even like what are you doing basketball related? What are you doing sports? Just life. How you doing? Yeah. Because I I know for for some of our guys in Barnegat, they don't have all the resources. Um, that other kids have. Yeah. Um, because that's something simple is when, you know, when we take them out to dinner or we bring them something in a day, they're beyond thankful. Mm -hmm. I open up the gym a little bit earlier, they're all in there. 
Um, Amazing. So the opportunities that I can provide, if I'm able to do those type of things with them, that that's what means the most. Because then you see the smile on their faces. And they you don't, love that, right? Oh, listen, to me, that's a win. Yeah. To me, that's a total win, regardless what state championships, division titles, short conference. To me, that's that's what these guys remember most. So when you leave a room, what do you want people to say about you? Like when you left Shempy's office the other day, what is what is what is what would you like your legacy to be? That he cared about us as people. Mm. You know, he, he coach didn't really care if I made all the shots. He didn't care if I had all the stats. He didn't care if we won. But at the end of the day, I knew if I needed something, I could rely on coach, and, and coach always had my back. Amazing, amazing. So, so is there is there a website or or any kind of business, or is there a way to reach out to you at all? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm on Twitter at Coach Poro. Um, you know, I, I'm very good with communicating. So if anybody has a questions, comments, they, they want anything, um, feel free to DM me there or, or tweet at me and, and I, we can go from there. Do you talk to other coaches? Do you have like a consulting kind of thing or anything? Where no, honestly, a I circle don't. of influence. No, I, honestly, I, for me, it's just, it's networking amongst the guys that I've, I've, I believe do it the right Amazing. way. Um, Amazing. So that, that to me is my evidence. Brother, listen, thank you for coming down no, today. It. Thank no, you for thank being you. here. This is awesome. It, yeah. I, I had a blast. Is there any, any final thing you want to say no, to anybody? No, just thank you for Somebody? having me. Dude, no, I appreciate you. it, dude. It was thank all you. you. I appreciate it, brother. Thanks, Thanks man.